Hello, my name is Ivor Alexander from Fujitsu America, and this is a presentation about Interstage Automated Process Discovery. Now, Interstage's Automated Process Discovery is a service that we use where we use process evidence to um, measure and uh, identify the as-is process as it really is. So if you have an environment where there's multiple systems, ERP systems, legacy, homegrown, pretty much anything, when people interact with it, they leave evidence behind about what happened, when did it happen, and which case did it apply to. And so now as you think about a process that's flowing through an organization and the people and participants in that process are interacting with all these multiple systems, what they're doing is they're leaving these log entries behind, these breadcrumbs that we use in automated process discovery to really visualize the process as it really is. So if we think about all these people have interacted with these systems and now we, we sort of just look at the log files of those systems or the logs of those systems and we say, okay, let's, let's correlate all that information. So the first step in that is really to look at all those events, figure out their relationships and correlate them. Once they're all correlated, then the next thing to do is to really understand what all those events meant and to visualize them into a, an actual process model. So that, that's where the process generator goes through. It looks at each and every event in the process and maps it out into a visual. But that's one thing that you can get. But on top of that, you need to be able to analyze the discovered process. So with that analysis, what you get is you can say, we visualize the process flow. We see what happens. What is the sequence? Which way do things flow? We also get process metrics. This is information about how many went down a particular path or how long did things take. On top of that, you have the ability to, to aggressively search for inefficiencies in process routes, looking for delays in the process, looking for repeated steps, things like that. And then once you have all that information, you want to compare with business requirements so you can lean out any wasted steps or any things that don't really uh, contribute towards performing the process efficiently. So you want to be able to go lean, you want to reduce the cost of routes or reduce the cycle time, that's all done in that comparing with the business requirements. What do we need this process to be doing? And once you have all that, then you take it to the next step and you say, okay, now we've identified the as it really is, now we can adapt, now we can improve the process. Because remember, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So the first step in any pro business process improvement initiative is to be able to measure your process and using automated process discovery is the fastest way to do that. Um, the demo that I'm going to show you is a scenario for a manufacturing company and how they handled their opportunity through to order process. So how the opportunity got converted into a quote and the quote got converted into an order. Now just before we go into that, let me explain a little bit about what we're seeing on the screen right now. So we're seeing some boxes and arrows the boxes represent steps in the process. So we're now seeing an opportunity and a quote. And um, these represent the creation of an opportunity or the creation of a quote. And we're seeing some arrows with numbers next to them. Those numbers represent how many cases went down that path. So we're seeing that 129 opportunities got converted into quotes. Now on the bottom left out here we see the total number of flows. So it says 397. This is telling us that, that we're looking at 397 cases of this opportunity to order process. And um, what we're visualizing right now is showing us two unique routes through the process. But we're only looking at 10% of the data. So that's one of the cool things about automated process discovery is that as I move this slide up, we start to see more and more data. We see more events appearing, more cases being displayed. We're now looking at 1,011 cases, and they took nine unique routes. So if I keep pushing this higher and higher, we start to see more and more bits of data, more and more evidence coming from the breadcrumbs that we've used to extract the data from. If I keep pushing this up, we start to see spaghetti appearing pretty quickly and um, going all the way to 100% we see you know, this is real life. There's a lot of arrows, a lot of lines going all over the place. And so the power of the tool is that we can see the full picture 
in all the spaghetti that, that's out there, but we can also take it down and look at what typically happens. So we can focus in on, say, 50% now and see exactly what's going on. Now I mentioned that automated process discovery shows us sequence information about what the steps in the process are. And in addition to that, it gives us process metrics, information about how many went down a particular path and how long things took. So right now, we're seeing the steps in the process. We're seeing that opportunities are getting created, um, and then quotes are getting created. Sometimes the quotes change. Sometimes the opportunities change. Orders get created after that, and then we ship something. Sometimes the orders might change. So, so the tool is showing us the sequence. This is exactly what's happening. We're, we're immediately seeing that sometimes after opportunities, they, they go down this path on the left, and they don't go anywhere. Final state is like a placeholder for nothing happened after that. Um, so we're seeing some opportunities that got created but didn't go anywhere. Um, so we're, we're seeing the information about the sequence, how the process flowed. Now we're also seeing some numbers displayed next to each of the arrows. The numbers are the metrics, how many opportunities got converted into quotes. So we're seeing 355 went forward and became a quote. But we see a larger number, 419, actually went and got changed. So it immediately starts helping us to ask the question, why did so many get changed? Why weren't they going forward and becoming quotes? Why weren't we progressing on the process? So these kind of metrics are immediately going to help us um, pinpoint potential problem areas. Now we're seeing information about how many, but we can also add information about transition times. So we can see for each step in the process, the average time it took to progress from that first step to the next step. So we're seeing here that to go from opportunity to quote, it took 1.7 days on average. From quote through to order, it took 3.7 days on average. So these are giving us useful metrics for where there might be a potential problem. The technology can also highlight bottlenecks in the process. And so we can, we can immediately say, oh, wow, look at this one. It's taking 58 days to get through. Now, with this particular case, going from opportunity and then the opportunity getting changed or getting refreshed, when we um, explored this particular uh, metric with the client, it turned out that this was a scenario where the salesperson had this opportunity that he was working on or, or quite often was forgot about. And um, after about two months, when they had to review all their opportunities and review their forecast, they suddenly would r remember this particular one and they'd go in and try and um, update something or change something. So, so this metric immediately gave insight that hey, our salespeople need to start looking at their forecasts, looking at their opportunities a lot more proactively and not wait for two months and then try and change something to, to revitalize the opportunity. So let me turn off that information about the bottleneck and um, I'll show you uh, information about standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is important because it allows us to see consistency of performing the task. It allows us to understand whether a particular step is being performed with the same amount of time every time or are there big variations in it. So for this step opportunity through to quote, we're seeing the average was 1.7 days. But below that, we're seeing a standard deviation of 15 days. That means usually it takes 1.7 days, but there is a big variation here where we're talking about close to three weeks just to get the opportunity progress to quote, whereas on average it's about two days. So we've got a lot of inconsistency here, and it's giving us pointers for, okay, you might need to train staff, might, might need to get them better educated so that the job can be done consistently and SLAs can be met reliably. So that's the information about standard deviation.